Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Movies, Movies, Movies podcast. I'm your host, Gabe Lidfak, and I'm here with a special guest, Dennis Dolan. Say hi, man. Hi. So, we uh, have been talking about doing an episode for the last few days, and he wanted to uh, do something that had... We wanted to do something a little bit special, you know, with the holidays coming up and everything like that. We decided that we were each going to pick a horrible romantic comedy to watch, and we were going to talk about it today. Full spoilers. So, if you, by chance, want to watch any of these movies for some reason... Um, Full caution. This is spoiler. This is a spoiler warning for all of you. So let's let's get started. What did you watch, Dennis? Uh, so you recommended a film to me. Let me see if I can uh, pull it up real quick. You recommended me a film that came out uh, May thirteenth, twenty twenty, called The Wrong Missy. It stars David Spade. Laura Lapkus and Nick Swadson, and is based on the uh, in, uh, pick up uh, is based on it's not based on anything. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, the plot of the movie is basically you have this guy named Jack Morris who a while ago dated this just crazy woman named Melissa, and has recently met another Melissa who's just the best woman, who's the hottest woman. Okay. That's how the I imagine that's how it was written. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and uh, his company, with basically the instatement of his new manager, uh, decides to take the entire company on a retreat. He decides to call it Melissa mm-hmm. to go as a sort of plus one. Unfortunately, he calls, as the title suggests, the wrong Melissa, otherwise known as the crazy one. So something... Uh, to note, uh, I don't know. Well, how did you basically pick this movie for me? I picked this movie because I, I was actually I was more aiming towards because I'm actually I I hate Adam Sandler like comedies, and but but I I also like the first thing I actually suggested to you was an Adam Sandler comedy, mm-hmm. and uh, after that suggestion, you know, you had to pay for it. So of course we didn't we I didn't make you do that. We're so not pay for these movies. Yeah, that would be horrible. Oh. Oh. Um, but I was like, you know, I need to mo- do a movie kind of like that. Something that I know is bad. And then I came up with this film. I was actually just looking through Netflix and I was just like, oh yeah, this one. Yeah, he'll love this, man. he will fucking love this. So I, I hope you enjoyed it. I-, I really do, man. It was, uh, came from the heart. Yeah, I think this is a best of the year candidate. Best of the year, yeah. Uh, yeah, th- yeah, this is gonna sweep, this is gonna really sweep Oscar season. Yeah, seriously, man, like. Every performance in that movie deserves, you know, best actor, best actress, best picture. Uh, well, I'll, I'll I'll sort of start off. Uh, I'll sort of start off with uh, some of the cast and crew behind the movie. Uh, so this movie was directed by a man named Tyler Spindle. Yep. Uh, a man who doesn't really have that many credits under his belt. However, all of his credits are these kinds of movies. Absolutely oh. all of them. Nice. Uh, say, for example, he's credited as an extra in Jack and Jill. Oh, great. Uh-huh. Yep. Uh, it was written by uh, Chris Pappas and uh, Kevin Barnett. Uh, if I remember correctly, one of them has written a lot of these. And uh, I just want you to guess, how many producers do you think are on this movie? Yeah, that's a good question, but how bad it is, I'd like to say, like, one or two. I but... counted 14. 14? I really? counted 14 producers. Okay, now, actually... They, were, they, were the, they weren't all producers. A couple of them were, like, executive yeah, producers of course. and stuff. But I was still able to count 14 different names. That, you know, that actually makes sense. You know, I take that back. The, yeah. the worse the movie, the more producers there's probably going to be, because it's pr- probably production hell at this point. Um, well... Especially, you say it's uh, you say it's production hell. Oh, probably. This is the wrong Missy. Uh, I'm sorry. It's just the wrong Missy. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is one of those Adam Sandler movies that is, hey, let's go on a vacation to the Bahamas and film a movie around it. Okay. It's one of those movies. Mm-hmm. So, might as well go over what happens in the movie, I guess. 
Actually, uh, before that, let me introduce okay. my film, and then we will get into full full spoilers. Oh, all right. Yeah, sounds good. All right. Okay. All right. So you suggested not Cinderella's type. Now, I had n- heard absolutely nothing about this, and uh, now I know the reason why. This movie is directed by Brian Brow. I think that's how you pronounce it. I, I'm not really sure. I don't really want to attempt. Um, but it stars Paris Warner, Tanner Gilman, Tim Flynn, Scott Christopher, J.J. Newward, Mary Neville, and I'm probably... Uh, oh, and the mo- more other important character, Ben Hopkin. Um, but this is a movie that, um, you know... It, from the poster, <laughs> didn't <laughs> didn't particularly look good. And then when I looked at where the, I could the, watch the it, poster, the poster is just like a wedding picture. Oh yeah, dude, for sure. It, yeah. it also looks photoshopped as hell. Yeah. Um, but the when, Miss Missy looks like it's a poster. Oh yeah, it's true. But when I saw that it was streaming on Tubi, that's kind of when I got like a, a bad feeling in my stomach. You know what I mean? Because yeah, so like Tubi, Tubi's a weird one. Tubi oh, yeah. is like. Tubi has like some of the greatest movies that have been oh, ever yeah, made on there, seriously. and mm-hmm. also has just the worst of the worst. Yeah, but like Tubi is, it's actually a good streaming service. Yeah, I would, yeah, it's, I would... aw- yeah it's awesome. It's a, we're gonna uh, sponsor uh, Tubi sponsor us. Yeah, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's an awesome service. It's entirely free and has and contains a massive library, including like some really good quality content, as well as the most exploitable content in terms of comedic effect and stuff. Oh yeah, it's like the it's like the uh, the version of Amazon Prime Video you don't have to pay for, which is yeah, it's awesome. great. It's great. But um yeah, I, I went into this movie not really, you know, not knowing literally anything about it. And uh, from the opening scene, I got to tell you, I this movie was bad. I actually had to take breaks uh, every once in a while because I, I couldn't wrap my head around what I was watching. And actually, I, 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 yeah, I didn't take any breaks watching the, uh, the wrong Missy. I have to, I have to, yeah. I mean, here's the thing with this movie. Um, I, I'm just gonna name one flaw that I have with it. Um, it 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 panders to its audience so much. The dialogue, there's basically the entire movie is just dialogue. It doesn't show anything happen. It, it just kind of just is like dialogue after dialogue after dialogue. Except they're in different locations. <laughs> I see. And uh, it sucks because they literally spell out every s- plot point in the entire movie with dialogue. Everything is said to us. We don't get to see anything happen. And also, just by the way, the concept is dumb as hell. Why would you ever do that? Mm-hmm. And most of the acting, I-, I did say one positive before we started recording. One of the positives is there are some potential good actors in this film but most of the acting sucks, like real bad. Yeah. So, yeah, man. I mean, I don't really have anything else to say. The, uh, do you want to start, or do you want me to start? How about I'll start? Yeah. Okay. It's your show, so I'll let you take it away. Uh... Thank you. Thank you. All right. So the actually, wrong actually, mis- actually, do you want me to describe how I found this movie? Oh yeah, no, no, no. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So sometime during the evening. Uh, my family, uh, basically my mom and my little sister, we will just scroll through Amazon Prime, mm-hmm. find what we think it just looks like the worst movie, okay, and just watch it. And one of those movies uh, was this movie, not Cinderella's Type, uh, in which we found out something very interesting about it, and we'll give we'll give a little bit of trivia about the movie. Uh, the movie was shot. In Utah. Oh, yeah. Where, yeah, it was shot in Utah. Mm-hmm. Three blocks uh, away we, from my house. Yeah, we basically, uh, we basically found out because uh, we looked at the footage and found out it was shot at Orem High School. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Bit, bit of a shame that this is our pride and joy. I mean, this is definitely, this is definitely made by a, a Mormon production company. I can tell. I can definitely tell. Um, but... Let's just say, um, this movie sucks. Uh, I didn't enjoy any aspect about it. Uh, again, few moments where I was like, oh, that acting isn't terrible. It's actually not that bad. Like, I can stand it. I can't say the case with the rest of the movie, though. Everything else sucks, because not only do they take a nonsensical route 
with every single character in this movie, the plot just makes no sense. Everything that happens makes absolutely no sense. There's this whole plot line with uh, the main plot line, actually, where this this kid who is amazingly played by Tim Flynn, or whatever his name is, uh, he runs over the main character's cat. And... Uh, yeah. Well, you start, I, I, think I forgot that the movie started off with a cat. Just and, right and, off the gate. And, and, oh, oh, that's supposed to be our Chris Charming. Oh, he just killed the main yeah. character's animal. Here's the thing, right? Instead of just leaving her alone like a normal person would, like if I ran over someone's cat, I, I wouldn't talk to them. Why? Why would you? Yes, you can say sorry. You can go up them to them and be like, "Oh my god, I'm I'm so fucking sorry. Like this is your cat. It's important to you." But I'm not going to constantly bug you and then catch feelings for you. Like first off, look, that's not how you get a girlfriend. Second off, I mean, I mean I figured that I figured that was pretty self-explanatory. Yeah, of course. One does not one does not acquire a date. Seriously. By a murder of the yeah, yeah, and they. Oh, and one other thing is they constantly joke about it in the movie. Constantly, they constantly joke about it, and I, I don't know. I don't know what they were thinking, but the thing is, like, it's just so nonsensical. It doesn't make any sense because that's not exactly that's not what would happen in real life. Um, and also, just this guy by just by insisting on talking to her, it just comes off as a total asshole, which is not even the point of the movie. The point of the movie is to make him a likable character. He's not likable. He's creepy as hell. He's creepy. Dude, if I were her, man, I'd, I'd stay the hell away from him. <laughs> like, That's uh, a scary situation. It's it's super weird, and it just doesn't make much sense. And they, and they try to take this Cinderella spin to the story, which it's basically a beat-for-beat beat kind of... It has that beat for beat structure of Cinderella, except for the last act. Well, I will, I will get that. I will get into that later. Oh, you will. Um. But basically, <laughs> basically, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm thinking about the third act right now, and it's making me laugh because it's hilarious. Uh, yeah, uh, d- 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 listeners, keep in mind this. You will. It's great. It's good stuff. It's it's something else. Man. It, it really is. Um, they take the Cinderella spin, and it, not only doesn't it work, but the way they deliver dialogue through all of this story is some of the worst I've ever seen in a film. Um, when they show... when Okay, so when, so basically, the main character's mother dies in a car accident, whatever, whatever but when they pull up... When her aunt and uncle adopt her, uh, they pull up to the house, <laughs> and immediately after they get out of the car, they're just like, "Oh, that funeral is lame. Wish they could have. She could have done more with her life." <laughs> and I'm, I'm just like, "Whoa! Holy crap!" And the thing is, you know, for some movies, you know, they're they're if it were a comedy, right? They they'd make fun of that. And if the if the full movie, if the entire movie was a comedy, it would actually kind of work, but. It doesn't because the movie is supposed to be a romantic drama, and, and that's uh, yeah. that's the type the of movie, shit. Yeah, God, it, it's weird because the movie try. It, it's almost like they just. It's like either they came up with. I think I think what they probably did was they came up with the sort of statement first, mm-hmm. like the like the final act statement, but then pretty much like left came back six months later Mm -hmm. and just forgot what they wrote. Okay. And just, we'll get to that in a minute. It feels like, um, you know, it feels like they actually made the script by writing the final scene first. And then they constantly progressed through the script by just fucking writing it backwards. Cause nothing, again, nothing makes sense. And the thing is, right, um, a lot of the character decisions in this film also are weird and kind of creepy. At the same time, it just, it feels so rushed. Everything feels so rushed. And then, while there are some things that feel rushed, there are some things that just don't get the point forward (laughs) in time. It, It feels like some 
pl plot points of the movie are rushed, and it also feels like some plot points of the movie don't come fast enough, which is weird. Yeah. I've never experienced that in a movie before. But something that... Uh, actually, that's a lie. I've experienced that in a lot of movies, actually. But um, it, it feels... It just feels like every single scene in this movie every single scene except for maybe one feels like they did they got they uh, used the first take it does it really yeah, that does makes sense cuz it doesn't feel like there's any emotion brought to anything anywhere and, and not just that this movie is so insanely ridiculous to the point where it doesn't need to because it's stupid and you don't care and you know there's this character, this best friend character played by Tanner Gilman, who is actually not the most terrible in the movie. I think he's probably the most likable character in the movie. But they do something with him that just makes the main character feel like an asshole by the end of the movie. Yeah. And it makes you contradict everything you just watched. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but... By the end, of, it's almost like by the end of the movie, the tones have shifted, and now the guy who murdered her cat is suddenly the coolest guy she knows. Oh yeah, yeah, and yeah. Her best friend she's known since childhood is suddenly a really creepy dickhead. Yeah, dude. So here's the thing, right? We're actually gonna get in spoilers. Um, so Tanner Gilman's character, the best friend character, uh, basically starts a thing with this main character played by Paris Warner. I'm just going to call them by their names. Best friend character is Maxton. Main character is Indy. Uh, so basically... So they, they have a thing, and, you know, they kiss in the movie, and it's like, oh, okay, this isn't horrible. At least they're not... She's not, you know, making out with that creepy, blonde-haired kid who looks like every Mormon to ever be conceived. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, pretty came, much. Um, came straight, came straight with the <laughs> with the bright yellow blonde hair. Yeah, seriously, man. Are already balding. And that's another thing, man. He's too fucking nice. It just oh god, it's weird, yeah. man. Um, but basically, they have this thing throughout the movie, and then this thing happens, which I'll get into in a bit. Um, but basically, Tanner, I mean Maxton, uh best friend um is like at a hospital or something and the main character calls him but he's busy because you know earlier in the film he almost broke his fucking legs so apparently so so he's just like i'm sorry man i can't i can't talk right now i'm sorry i hope everything's okay i can't talk right now i'm at the doctors i'm at the doctors and then she <laughs> there's a shot of her she's like she's like confused and shit and is like what else do you want to know? Like, <laughs> like, come on, man. I already, the moment she made that face, I knew where the story was going to go. Um, and it sucked. It really sucked. Uh, but basically this ends up, you know, affecting their relationship. And she's basically at the end of the movie be like, I can't be with you anymore. You know, you're my best friend and all, but I like this creepy cat murdering guy better. So, yeah, that's basically what happens. Now, let's talk about Child Protective Services. Oh. Because, because this, this is a big part of the movie, all right? Here we go. So, the fucking, the, the aunt and uncle treat Indy so badly that, um, <laughs> that they have to call Child Protective Services. Or Tim, uh, Tim's character has to call Child Protective Services, and then she basically makes a lawsuit against them, and she wins by the end. It's it's the sharpest 180 <laughs> in any movie. It's like, you start off, and it's like, okay. Cinderella. They're trying, they're trying to do, like, a Hallmark-style movie, but they got, like, kids doing it. Yeah. Then suddenly, it takes a hard left into an ultra-serious movie about how horrible the Child Protective Service is. 
and how horrible like foster care is. Oh yeah. It's, yeah, well, it, it, it's just it leaves you asking like, wait, what, what, what? Like you you, you forget that the lead character killed a cat. Yeah, dude. I, honestly, I don't think it tries to. Uh, I don't think it tries to make the foster care system look bad. It tries to actually make it look great. Yeah. But it's so <laughs> so yeah. rushed. And again, nothing makes sense. This is not how this is not how it works. Yeah, the, it's just it's just 180 so oh, hard. Oh, that's another thing. They don't show anything happen. It is all dialogue. It is everything is dialogue. When she learns about child protective services and emotional abuse, she doesn't learn it through, you know, showing it like any normal movie would. No, they talk about it. There's a set of rules for uh, for uh, child protective services, so you'll be fine here. You know, they don't show that conflict. They just they fucking talk it to you, man. They throw it at you, and it yeah, makes no they sense. Throw it at you. And they don't even show they don't even show the court session, which Indy yeah, should be not. a part of. She should be a part of that, but she's not. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh my god. It's oh. Such a it's such a turn. It's such a one eighty, man. It yeah, literally yeah, surprised actually, the hell out of me. Yeah, because at that point it's like a hallmark, like, oh, <laughs> this is going to be like a romance. Sort dude, of dude, thing. this is the yeah, Avengers really Endgame think. of Hallmark movies. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> like it's like it's like Infinity War, right? Like you know, like characters you know doing superhero stuff, but then all like half of them die, you know. This <laughs> movie's version of it is, oh look, it's a Cinderella kind of Hallmark thing. Child Protective Services, and it just throws it at you, and you're like, oh, you know, like, you're just surprised by it, because it's so out of the blue, except it's terrible, and it makes you want to cry for another reason, you know? Yeah. God, I, honestly, man, I don't know what else to say. Like, this movie just gave me an experience that I've never really have had before. I'm not a romantic comedy type of guy. All right, I will watch romantic comedies with a girl. That's well, really the only well, exception. Well, are you not? Are you not going to mention how she ends up with the Mormon clone? Guy? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He he. She ends up with the Mormon clone guy, the creepy guy who you know murdered her cat. Well, it's it's not enough that she ends up with him. She becomes his foster sister. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> she becomes his. She she becomes his adopted sister. <laughs> Which makes it so now. weird. So it's like. What are they? It makes you think, right? Like, I mean, I guess these kids are Mormon, but like, ugh, what's going to yeah. go on? Yeah, exactly. It, it's like, uh, yeah, ba basically, uh, what's the character's name again? Uh, you mean the the Mormon guy? Yeah. Bryant. Bryant? Yeah, Bryant or something. Oh, Bryant. Okay. Yeah. So Bryant. Uh, basically, it's revealed later on that once uh, this girl is having issue with her foster parents. Uh, that uh, Brian's dad uh, is basic, basically like takes in a lot of foster kids. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically they end up taking her in. And once like the whole court session is finished, they just adopt her. Yeah. Completely, yeah. completely missing the fact that it's now exceptionally creepy because now he's <laughs> like adopted siblings with this girl who he's very clearly attracted to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty good, man. Yeah. Um, I, th I think the best part about that is they're taking photos for a prom, and uh, the the dad at the end of the movie has to like, oh, I ran out of battery for the camera, so he runs inside, and then that's when they kiss. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Almost like they're almost like they're hiding it which they totally which they totally are I mean come on man yeah it's so damn weird and you know what's even weirder I can imagine the dad looking through the window and being like that's my boy you know it's like totally totally, like, totally fine that's with my it boy. Yeah. oh good I'm tramped yeah <laughs> give her the old one too it's like so fucking stupid god damn it yeah. Oh, God. And you can also tell... You know, that's that's something I actually want to talk about. But you can, you can tell that this movie is so clearly made 
with, you know, a, a Mormon kind of feel to it because there is no intensity brought to anything the characters are saying. And not just that, there is no, there is no, you know, real tension in the film. And because, like, every, like I said, everything just feels rushed and the dialogue just feels so out of place that it, it just... It just doesn't work because again, everything is explained to you. Nothing is shown to you. Even yeah, when yeah, th- the, most, the most tense you get throughout the entire movie is when suddenly the situation with her aunt and uncle become like a, t- they turn into a situation where suddenly child protective services need to come yeah. in and they need to go to court. <laughs> Actually, I will say that one scene where she freaks out. Um, in front of them, she actually did not do a, a terrible job at that. It, it wasn't it wasn't remarkably bad like the rest of the movie. Which yeah. which makes me think like, you know, maybe she does have something in her. You know, um, I mean, maybe every they all clearly live in Utah. That's true, but at the same time, I, I don't want to assume anything. You know, I uh, uh, as much as I hate this movie. I hope all of them have a successful career and they yeah. are a part of better movies and, and all of that, of course. like Even if a movie is insultingly bad, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't wish um, terrible things for the people who made it and who were a part yeah. of it. Yeah, if, um, any, if any of the actors are in, from, these, from this movie... Uh, still live in Utah, please call us. We desperately need actors. Oh, yeah, seriously. And, and actually, uh, if any of you are watching this, uh, please uh, call me, email me. Uh, honestly, I'm please. actually, I'm thinking about putting my uh, my Gmail uh, on my, uh, in my, dis- in my um, uh, profile. So if any of you want to get in contact with me, uh, email me, please. Uh, I'd be, I'd love to talk to you. I'd love to sit down and do this podcast with you, you know, maybe talk about your experience. Uh, I'd actually love to do that, you know. I, I like I like learning things from people who have been a part of projects like this, even if, even if I don't like it. Um, so, yeah, please, yeah. please. Yeah, while you're, at, while, while you're at that, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Yeah, that, sub- subscribe. Yeah, turn on your notifications. Yeah, subscribe, subscribe to the Cinema Schmucks. Yes, we use a swear word in 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 my uh, in my YouTube channel name, um, yeah. because I am a schmuck. That's that's what I am. I I piss people off for a living, <laughs> with my movie opinions. I don't, but yeah, seriously, contact me. Uh, I, I'd love to sit down and talk, maybe hang out, get to know you guys. It'd be wonderful. Um, Honestly, as an inspire as a, as an aspiring filmmaker myself, I'd I'd love to uh, get to know all of you. <laughs> yeah, definitely. With 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 genuine, I'm being a little genuine. I I am being genuine. I'll fuck it. I'm being genuine. But oh dear. That being said, uh, did not like this film, not one bit. Had to take breaks. Uh, had a really rough time going through it. I did kind of go back. And uh, every once in a while, and I, I rewind a scene and I watch it again because I couldn't believe my eyes. So, you know. All right, man. What did you yeah. think of the wrong? Uh, the well, what, what, what about your review? What's your review for this one? Oh, my my grade. Yeah. Oh, straight up F, man. Kidding me? <laughs> straight up F. All right. Again, it's not unwatchable or anything, but it's just, and it's not insulting. That's one thing I can say. It's not insulting and it's not embar- it's like it's not like it's not something that you can't watch. You can watch it and like it for all the wrong reasons. Yeah. All right, man. Go go ahead. All right. So we're going to start in what well, was my movie, which is The Wrong Missing. Uh, I think I'll just do a bit of a play-by-play of what happened during the movie. Uh, so uh, the movie starts uh, and immediately tells you exactly why you either do or do not like this movie. Uh, so uh, I'll start off by talking about the performance of the main two characters. Okay. Because in every great romance movie, you have to have at least two great characters at the forefront. Mm-hmm. These two characters are not great characters. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So 
you have uh, Jack, you have Tim Morris, uh, who is played by David Spade. Uh, okay. He delivers his lines with he delivers his lines like just before the camera started rolling he got a call from a lawyer telling him that his wife just served him <laughs> like i like if the camera's cut and immediately he just like told like the ad hey look my wife just divorced me is there any way we can move this along a little quicker yeah. 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 He, he delivers all of his lines like his wife just divorced him right before they started shooting. Yeah, man. I will agree. His his performance is pretty miserable to watch because he's yeah. miserable the entire time. Yeah. It's just, it's so, it's so just monotone. Uh, you, you, you feel the energy that of, I don't want to be here. Oh, yeah, and then sure. there's, uh, there's Lauren Lapkus, which I quite like Laura Lapkus. I don't like her in this. Yeah. She's uh, annoying as hell. She, whilst uh, David Spade's performance is that of a drunken dad, mm-hmm. Laura Lapkus gives the performance of someone who's just done all of the bath salts. <laughs> just all of them. Oh. Yeah, or, or just has taken, like, an egregious amount of cocaine beforehand. Yeah, it's it's uh, yeah. it's real something else. Yeah. So uh, the, the movie opens... Uh, with David Spade, with David Spade's character uh, Tim, uh, uh, Tim is basically meeting this girl named Melissa. Uh, uh, she basically says, uh, "Hey, I'm this lady. Do be warned, this guy is hitting on me and being really creepy." Uh, he walks up to WWE wrestler Roman Reigns. Don't ask how I know that. I'm quite a wrestling fan, so oh, I recognized him. And fun fact, he is easily the best actor in this movie. Oh, sweet. So, uh, okay. What? What's up? I uh, no, I just I, I kind of agree that you know every single cameo that is made in this movie is the best part. Yeah, the can We'll we'll get to the rest of the cameos. Oh yeah, yes, trust we trust me, we will get to them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Amen. Right, so yeah, Roman Reigns shows up. He's easily the, gives the best performance in the movie, and it's revealed that uh, Laura Lacus's character Missy, or the Melissa he was looking for, pranked him, and nearly caused a bar fight with him. Oh shit! Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so they start to date, and it's immediately revealed that uh, you'd think this Missy is just like this weird manic pixie dream girl. Mm-hmm. No. No, this lady is a danger to society. <laughs> okay. She's going to get... It's, it's revealed immediately. Like, she, like she's trying to get this man killed. <laughs> like, like you think it wouldn't have been enough that he, like, confronted this guy at this bar, right? No, she immediately shouts from the other end of, the, of like, the bar that her boyfriend will kick his fucking ass. Oh, <laughs> Just trying yeah. to instigate a fight. It's it's just real. This is also a movie that's very nonsensical in a way. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Really, the plot is not even a plot. That's that's something I recognize. Until like maybe like the last act of the movie, there's really no plot. I mean, yeah, you got the setup and and all of that, but then it's just a bunch of hippy dippy bullshit throughout the middle, and then you really got nothing. There's nothing yeah. there. So anyways, uh, David Spade does what probably most people would do and just tries to get the fuck out of there as quickly as possible. Mm-hmm. Uh, ends up breaking his ankle when he comes down. Missy finds him and snaps it back into place. And that's basically how their first date ended. Uh, oh. Then it's revealed that uh, Tim works at an office space. What does his office space do? Uh, they do business and work. <laughs> that's what their business is. They do business and work in stocks. Uh, so basically, uh, uh, he's about to head out to Newark where we're introduced to his friend uh, Nate, played by Nick Swartzen, who's a bit of a regular on Happy Madison, uh, okay. in which I'm, I want to say I'm like 75, 80% sure that if a rough draft of this script does exist, 
he was very clearly a gay character. Okay. Like, so clearly. Uh, because he talks to uh, Tim about how he's been spying on his messages and just all of this crazy what the shit. F- like, he knows about all of, the, all of his love problems in life very clearly meant to be a gay best friend you know that's that's actually that that's crazy because i don't even remember that <laughs> this movie i do this movie is forgettable that's that's something i i watched this actually a few months ago um when it first came out and um i just i barely remember anything about it actually pretty much i mean now that you actually mentioned i do remember that but it's so uh, again the movie has basically no plot to the point where nothing is memorable literally nothing yeah yeah i mean there is stuff that is memorable oh for sure memorable for all of the wrong reasons oh yeah 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 man i agree so uh basically tim uh flies out to newark newark new jersey the sexiest of all of the cities in the u.s Mm -hmm. newark new jersey uh uh, where he runs into a uh, runway model, uh, uh-huh. one another girl named Melissa, who turns out, I, if I remember correctly, was a uh, uh, Miss Maryland, was a collegiate athlete in tennis. Mm. And uh, they meet with each other in the airport and immediately hit it up. They find that they have a lot in common, and, and they read the same, je- and they are actually currently reading the same James Patterson book. Oh, shit. I imagine I imagine James Patterson sued the movie very quickly afterwards because he didn't want to be associated with it. <laughs> yeah. So I, I don't blame him, man. Yeah. Uh, so they start talking a little bit. Uh, Dave Sp- uh, David Spade eventually sends a dick pic, uh, which Nate sees. I assume he saw. I don't really remember. I'm guessing he saw and in an earlier draft complimented it because he was meant to be a gay stereotype. Yeah. Uh, so it's announced in the office that they're going to go on a sort of trip. I don't remember where it was, but it looks like it's somewhere in the Caribbean. Maybe like, a, I don't know, the Bahamas or something. Uh, basically because uh, they've got a new boss, a man by the name of Jack Weinstone. Okay. And uh, basically, uh, Tim decides, okay, I'm going to bring Melissa as a plus one because we seem to hit it off really well. Unfortunately, he figures out that this entire time he's been texting uh, the Melissa who, you know, almost got him killed Yeah. in, in a bar. Uh, so he's very excited about that. You know, for sure, man. That's his character. And uh, this is a point. I'm now going to describe a part in this movie that really just threw me for a loop. Okay. Uh. Uh, when they first get on the plane, uh, Melissa basically, or Missy, as she's called throughout the rest of the movie, uh, thanks him uh, because she said she was about to jump off a bridge. Oh, shit. Yeah. And this movie doesn't play it as a joke, off as a joke I at first. That. I remember It's that. eventually re- revealed that what she meant was she was going bungee jumping by herself. Uh, and uh, him texting her about her date uh, calmed her down. But for, like, the first 30 minutes it's introduced, you as an audience member think, oh, shit, this main character in this Adam Sandler comedy is suicidal. Yeah, oh, my God, dude. Never expected to see that in an Adam Sandler comedy. It's just, whoa, this is real real quick. Yeah. But anyways, anyways, uh, after that, uh, Tim goes to sleep and then wakes up on the plane having having gotten... uh, 40 minute handy from Missy. Damn, dude. Uh, uh, this, this movie brings out all of the emotions in you. Oh, yeah, dude. Makes it's you... immediately revealed that one of your characters <laughs> has tried to kill themselves, and then they immediate, their next action immediately thereafter is to jerk off someone awake. Oh, yeah, seriously, man. That, that movie just brings just... out every single emotion out of me, especially yeah. the one where. You know, I want to get a handy now, you know what I mean? Like, jeez, yeah. man. Wow, it's just crazy. It's just a lot. That's also uh, a lie, because that's gross. Yeah, it's <laughs> on a, on a, a lot, a lot uh, of the movie is... It happens gross. on the plane, right? That happens it on does the, happen on the plane. Okay, well, yeah, uh, that, that's what I mean is disgusting. Yeah, that's that's yeah. gross, man. Why would you do that? Yeah, 
I mean, you know, anyways. So, so they get, so they get to the hotel, in which it, I believe it was revealed earlier, but basically, uh, uh, Tim's ex-wife is there uh, uh -huh. with her new uh, husband, who is just the jockiest of jocks. Yeah, he's the fr he's the frat of the frat. Just fucking ripped, man. Like, like if you if you didn't tell me, I would have assumed that this man played lacrosse and was really good at beer pong. Okay, yeah. You know. I do. I can't imagine that for sure, man. Well, yeah, uh, Missy, because she's had such a fantastic uh, record thus far. Uh, straight up, just tells his wife that he gave him. She gave him a handy on the plane <laughs> because, you know. Uh, Why not? So they go. So they go up to their hotel room, in which it's immediately revealed. Oh, this is this entire movie is just a paid-for vacation. Yeah. Uh, so anyways, they go up to the room. Missy does more crazy shit. She pretends to be some weird demon called Hellstar with grass blades on her eyes. It's weird. Jesus, man. It's, it's the most they try to make her charismatic, and it just kind of falls flat. Mm -hmm. so, Agreed. Uh, Tim goes down to his meeting with his new boss, uh, who basically is like, I look forward to getting to know each and every one of you throughout the rest of this trip. Yeah. Uh, in which uh, Nate learns that it was the crazy Missy. Mm -hmm. And, uh, however, the boss does not learn that it is the crazy, uh, that is the crazy Missy. Oh, shock, horror. Whatever will he do to solve this problem? Nothing. Mm -hmm. He will do nothing to solve this problem. He will drag his feet for ages. Because that's what all these movies do, you know. Yeah. It, again, that's what that's what I mean when I when I say like, when I when I say nothing happens in this film, I literally mean nothing happens. It it feels like it's just one big prank, and so, yeah. uh, it doesn't work at all because it's not funny. It's not entertaining. It's just boring, actually. Yeah, literally, it's so it's so boring. Like around. Around about the time I got to when uh, Nate was introduced, yeah, uh, I was like, "Oh, okay, this movie's going by fairly quickly. It's not going by too quickly, but you know, it's it's going all right." I then checked the timer and realized I was only eight minutes through the movie. <laughs> it was just like, "Oh, never mind." Uh, uh, here yeah. we go, I guess. Yeah. So, uh, more Missy hijinks and Sue. Mm -hmm. In which uh, it's revealed that uh, she's about to go cliff jumping. Uh, Tim reacts with about as he reacts about as appropriately as you would, having just heard the night before that a girl attempted to kill herself yeah. mm -hmm. before you started dating her, and uh, basically runs straight in there. Uh, she falls off the cliff, hits every rock on the way down, and because it's a cartoon, she ends up perfectly fine. Uh huh. Uh, so, uh, I'm trying to remember. Uh, after that, uh, the next day, uh, the boss, uh, John Weinstein, uh, mm -hmm. not why I almost said Weinstein. <laughs> well, we don't mention him either. Yeah, no, we don't. Uh, so the boss basically invites all of his employees onto this boat and this like. All right, we're going to have a little bit of a shark tank sort of thing, except instead of facing Mr. Wonderful, you're going to go up against an actual shark, in which our second cameo <laughs> appearance shows up, and it is... Uh, it's Rob Schneider. Oh, my God, Rob, Schne Rob Schneider, uh, the, the best Rob... actor in the entire world. It's Rob Schneider. Isn't he the one who tries to punch the shark? Yeah, he pun he's the one who oh punches God. the shark several times, actually. Yeah, it's like a full-on fucking fist fight, man. Yeah. Uh, so, I don't know what... His character's name is... Com Comate? <laughs> yeah. What? I, I, I read that name and thought it was some kind of spice. Yeah, or like a... Uh, yeah. I mean, I... I yeah, and whenever whenever I watch Rob Schneider in one of these movies, I just assume he's he's doing a stereotype of some culture. Mm -hmm. I'm not entirely sure 
which culture he's making yeah. fun of in in this role. I know it's a culture, but I'm unsure which it is. Maybe Hawaiian? I, I, uh, I don't know. It, it's un I thought Cuban, maybe? Cuban? I don't know. Uh, I mean, that'd make a little sense. But yeah, it goes about as well as you'd hope. Uh, basically, Tim eventually goes into the shark cage with his boss, uh, in which right. Missy, because she's proven to be a beacon of moral interest, She's proven to be the true lawful good in this uh, alignment chart. Sweet. Uh, 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 she decides, okay, well, my date is in a shark cage. I'm going to chum the water. Oh, my God. Uh, she doesn't end up chumming the water uh, because uh, Kamote, Rob Schneider's character, is like, no, don't chum the water. Literally on our boat, it says no chumming. Yeah, it's not we're not going to chum the water, which I'm not going to lie. Now that I think about it, it might just be a cum joke. Yeah, makes it sense. Might just be. It might just be. Anyway, so they have a little scuffle over the chum, uh, in which Missy gets drenched with chum. Uh, she then pukes into the cage, which that's a dick move. Uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, and for some reason, that's perfectly sufficient to chum the water uh -huh. I don't know how that's perfectly sufficient to chum the water but I guess it is uh, so after that uh, Tim is pretty reasonably upset with her oh yeah for sure uh, man because you know he's upset about she, everything at this point yeah yeah he's she's he's she's Attempted to kill him twice at this point. Oh, yeah, for sure. And, you know, yeah, what is what is up with her, man? She's a fucking full-on murderer. I don't know. The, well, I, I get the, it's the movie. That's the explanation I can give. Uh, so, you know, it's... Actually, before you continue, it's also weird because... when the, how, As this movie progresses, as she's tried to kill him twice... They actually start to get along. <laughs> well, we'll get we'll get to that. I we'll, we'll trust me. Okay. We'll talk about the Stockholm syndrome in just a minute. All right. Uh, so basically, at this point, Tim has had enough, and is basically just like, just take a spa day, please. Yeah. Just stay away from my work forever. Yeah. From and, me forever, actually. Yeah, and uh, uh, at which point. Uh, it's revealed that on complete and utter accident, uh, she took a spa day with the boss's wife and uh, convinced her to leave her husband. Oh, shit. <laughs> you know, his boss. Yeah. That's how movies Which, work. Uh, at, that, around about, at around about that point, it's revealed that Missy wasn't attempting to kill herself. She uh, was just going bungee jumping by herself. Oh. And the phone sort of snapped her out of it because bungee jumping by yourself is dangerous. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, they get into a short little argument in which Missy agrees to sort of rectify the situation in which she attempts to do it, in which she attempts to use the uh, Hellstar character, uh -huh. you know, the famous Hellstar character, uh, in which she basically tries to use that character to convince him to be a better husband. And he takes that about as well as you'd expect him mm -hmm. to take it. Yep. And that is to say, please get away from me, scary lady. Yep. I don't want to talk to you anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so basically, after that, it's revealed that uh, uh, Missy uh, hypnotized him. Uh, oh, she hypnotized him to do uh, three things. Yeah. Uh, whenever, uh, basically, whenever... Uh, the boss thinks of Tim. He thinks of his nan, and of course he loves his nan. Uh, whenever uh, he sort of, whenever the name of one of the rivals in the company is stated, uh, he gets physically ill. Okay. And uh, basically hypnotizes him to believe in childlike whimsy again. Damn. So after that information is revealed. Uh, this is when the Stockholm Syndrome starts to sink in. Okay. 
it's uh, suddenly revealed that Tim is starting to be okay with Melissa and the insanity that comes along her way. And this is uh, when it's revealed that her dad died and she sort of forced herself to become a jack of all trades, which this is a bit of a theme in Happy Madison movies. They will be just as bat shit insane as they can be. Yeah. And in ex- but they will have those scenes towards the end of the second act where it's just like, but this character is a real person. Like Deuce Bigelow, male gigolo is a real human being. That, or like any other Happy Madison character is a real human being. I don't know if Deuce Bigelow, male gigolo is a Happy Madison character, but you know. Uh, they don't act like real humans, that's for sure. Yeah, it's just, you know. Anyways, uh, so uh, after that, it sort of revealed that uh, Tim's ex-wife, who I think even the movie kind of forgot about after a while, yeah. uh, comes back and is basically like, hey, I think I might still have uh, feelings for you because, you know, we were married and all that. Uh, okay. And uh, basically they just have a threesome, Tim, Missy, and <laughs> his ex-wife. Because fuck nuance, I guess. Yeah, fuck, and, fuck real character development. And, and screw reality to the sticking place. Oh yeah, for sure. Because, because David Spade now could definitely score a threesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Threesome, you know, Adam yeah, Sandler? So this, three, so this three sum consists of uh, sort of sexual intercourse between David Spade and Missy in which every movement hits his ex-wife in the face nice. and flies her across the yeah. room. Like, like I said, this is pure Adam Sandler, even though Adam yes. Sandler has nothing to do with it. Yes, pure, unadulterated Adam Sandler. Oh, for sure. Anyways, so it's the next day uh, in which uh, it's revealed that uh, his rival in the company, a character who, by the way, I didn't even mention throughout this entire interview, and mm-hmm. uh, the movie doesn't really mention her either. Uh, I believe her name is uh, Jackie Sandler, which she may or may not be related to Adam Sandler. Like, she may or may not be, like, a spouse or something. Interesting. Uh, but anyways, uh, she sort of figures this all out on her own, and it's just like, y- y- listen, Missy, there is no universe in which you're, like, a multiple-time pageant winner a two-time collegiate athlete and all this stuff. Uh, that sort of sows the seeds of doubt in Missy's eyes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she checks his phone and revealed, and it's revealed, oh, yeah, I was the wrong Missy that wasn't su- that I wasn't supposed to be. Uh, to which she leaves the island. Which, all I have to say is, problem solved. It's over. Yeah. Ruby's over, gang. <laughs> We, we did it, right? <coughs> and yeah. then uh, the original Melissa comes to the island, too. Uh, uh, however, the Stockholm Syndrome has become too strong to ignore. Yeah. Tim's life has been far too ruined. Uh, before this, he didn't really drink. Now he's chugging cocktails and doing handstands. It's, it's over for him. And he sort of realizes that, like, yes, I have fallen in love with Missy. And it's all over for me. Yeah, he's gonna uh, fucking die, dude. Yeah, she's gonna get him killed. Yeah, again. <laughs> like, like he'll he'll snap back to reality, realize the craziness of the situation, and be like, "Hey, I want to, I want to leave." And then Missy will just respond with, "No one leaves, Missy." And oh, it'll God, just shoot yeah. him. It'll just yeah, it'll just be a um, it'll just be like a horror movie now. So yeah, uh, oh, the trip yeah. is over. And gets wait, back. actually, wait. Oh. You know what would be funny is if it turned into, like, you know, like, um, what is it? Oh, oh God, what's the movie? Uh, uh, Don't Breathe, but, like, the the, <laughs> ma- the main character, like, sprays, like, lemon in Missy's eyes, and she goes blind and, like, has to, like, hear it for him, but he's, like, hiding desperately, like, trying to <laughs> escape her. <laughs> yeah, oh, God, that'd be, uh, yeah, that'd be crazy. So, anyways, uh, he flies back to the States... Uh, and 
he cannot stop thinking of Missy. The Stockholm yeah. Syndrome has truly set in. Yeah. He's truly a broken man at this point. Oh, for sure, man. Now, I, that's what I'm saying. The movie is like, no, he's like a truly, like, he's a new man. Uh, he tries getting a hold of Missy a bunch of ways and fails in all of them. Yeah. Until this one way, uh, in which basically he decides, okay, I'm going to try the same trick that she did on me on our first date. Uh, so he basically says, uh, he basically, she bas- they basically meet up in the same restaurant and he texts her saying, uh, black ball cap and black jacket. And, uh, when she meets the guy, it's revealed, oh shit, it's vanilla ice. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's just vanilla ice. It's, it's awesome, man. He's just there. It's comedy gold. Now, I, I mentioned before that uh, Roman Reigns, the person that this happened to the first time around, was the first best performance. Uh, somehow, Vanilla Ice is the second best performance in this oh, movie. Oh, yeah, dude. Because, again, it's just Vanilla Ice. Yeah. Like, what he doesn't else do you rap. Need? He doesn't rap. He doesn't perform a song in the movie. Okay. He's just there. Just, Anyways, so after ice. that, David Spade explains the situation, and uh, they end up back together because... Uh, now he's been made crazy, and they can't live with the they can't live with anyone other than each other. God, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Little did they know that later, if the movie went on for like twenty more minutes, it would turn into like it would turn it would turn into like a oh man I I, I forget the name uh, there was a there was a Dennis. Uh, there was a Dennis Quaid movie that came out like a year ago in okay. which he like stalked a black couple. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. Yeah, Fuck. it's yeah, I know what it is. Uh, it's just it basically would just turn into that had the movie gone on for like another forty minutes. Okay. But yeah, uh, that's where the movie ends. Sweet. Uh, so yeah, <sighs> sounds uh, like sounds like a fitting ending for such a terrible movie. Yeah, it ends with Vanilla Ice. Calling, that, that's incredible. Calling David Spade Shrimp Dick. Which oh. is about as much as I expected from Vanilla Ice. Oh, of course, man. So, it, honestly, man, that's actually a funny scene. I will give them that. Um, it's just Vanilla Ice. Yeah, it's just Vanilla Ice, dude. Like, what else do you need? It's the, it just makes no sense. <laughs> yeah, it, it doesn't, right? It's like, it's like a glorified SpongeBob episode. Yeah, it was just just stupid you know, and he was the most one of the most normal actors in the entire movie all right man now now, now it's time to give your grade what, what would you give the wrong missy uh, i mean it didn't even turn in the assignment okay like <laughs> if it turned it in it would be an f but oh, they just, okay. it just didn't even turn in the assignment they turned in a vacation disguised as a movie oh, of course yeah dude like a, wow, man. So uh, let's actually let's let's come up with like a, a like a little you know rating system. I kind of kind of want to re-rate the movie. All right, that I that I did. I my see. my official rating for the not your Cinderella type. I think that's what I think that's what it's called. Um, I'm gonna give it a the Hallmark the the Avengers End Game of Hallmarks. That's my rating. What would you give the wrong Missy? Uh... I think I'm going to give this one uh, uh, Stockholm Syndrome, the Adam Sandler experience. Oh, dude, that's incredible, dude, because that's exactly what it is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's, oh, it's it's perfect, man. I mean, what else do you fucking want from a rom-com other than, you know, yeah, other what, than the fact that you want to scratch your eyes out, you know? I don't know. It, it, I don't know. Rom-coms are, are some of the, the weirdest movies of them all and um yeah. i learned that yesterday and yeah. gotta be honest man i don't regret it actually i uh learned something new i i i don't know i don't know if i regret it yeah <laughs> at the same fair. time i did want to sit through 90 minutes but at the same time it absolutely wouldn't have made the vanilla ice ending worth it Oh yeah, for sure. It absolutely wouldn't. Oh, oh yeah, dude. I mean, 
At least it at least kind of comes ends in a strong note, you know. The vanilla ice showing up, dude. Like yeah. I mean, I, I guess you get that. Yeah, everything else kind of just sucks. Yeah. But but hey, um. Guess that's uh. Guess that's really all we have today. I mean, there, there there's a lot of movie news going on right now, actually. Like a lot. There was a big sure. announcement today from Warner sure, Brothers. Sure, we in and off with movie news. Sure, let's talk about right. that for a bit. Um, Sounds good. So uh, Warner Brothers, uh, Warner Brothers decided, you know what? Fuck movie theaters. So they're <laughs> so they're, they're releasing. They were sticky anyways. Yeah, what the? Yeah, screw them. So they are now officially releasing every single movie on HBO Max and theaters. So that means uh-huh. Dune is going to be on HBO Max. Oh, Wonder I Woman. It was just Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman 1984 is going to be on HBO Max. Tom and Jerry is going to be on HBO Max. Uh, what else? Uh, Mortal Kombat is going to be on HBO Max. And guess what else is going to be on HBO Max? What's going to be on HBO Max? The Matrio. Is that what you said? Uh, I, uh, uh, what, uh, sorry, I'll do it again. Yeah, what start. else is going to be on HBO Max? The Matrix 4. Ah, Why? See. That is a movie you want to see in theaters. And, you know, Dune is a movie you want to see in theaters. You think I want to watch Dune on HBO Max? Come on, man. Ugh. I don't know. I'm going to go see all these movies in theaters, if you couldn't tell already. The theaters are, like, the most important thing to me. So I can't, I, I can't see. not do that. So. Yeah. I mean, I suppose, given current events and circumstances, you can't really do much that's true that is true you can't really release much like like i tend to kind of blew it for everyone as far as theater releases you know you know during covid times yeah i I agree i mean there is a purpose for it and i do think there could be some good come coming out of it like a lot of people have been saying that um since all these movies are coming out to uh hbo max they might, um, it actually may help movie theaters, because that means, I think, that means that the studio might, uh, you know, lower the price of the percentage that goes to them when it comes to buying a movie ticket. So that could actually uh, end up giving movie theaters a better, a better, um, just, just, uh, just more money in general, which is good. I, I do like that, and, and I think that would benefit... Though that wouldn't benefit indie movie theaters, which sucks, yeah. sadly. Uh, I'm, I really hope you know Broadway theater and Tower Theater are doing okay. Uh, you know, I'll do anything I can to support them, but it, I am glad that there might be a positive effect on it. Which, um, you know, I, I really hope this 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 is only like a one year thing because we're already starting to get the vaccine, and uh, by. April or May is when things are really going to start coming back at least a little bit to the way they were, which is good. So that actually kind of begs the question, why are they doing this the entire year? Um, That being said, I don't really have a complaint. I mean, it kind of scares me. Like, don't get me wrong. I am a little scared about the idea of this, but at the same time, there, there are some positives to it, and I do think that in the long run, it may actually benefit a lot more people than I thought. Uh, do, you th- do you think they'll do a similar thing that, like, Disney Plus did with Mulan and uh, Amazon Prime has been doing with regular theatrical releases? I don't think so. I think they're just going to be releasing it on on, uh, on their streaming service for free, which is awesome. I really do appreciate that. Um, that is actually one thing I do appreciate about all of this. Uh, other than the, you know, you know, movie theaters getting more money. I, I do think um, this those movies being free is like, oh, it comes with the streaming service, which already costs $15 a month. Um, so it's good. I do like that. I, I think Warner Brothers made a smart decision by doing that, for sure. Mm-hmm. But, hey, man, like, I'm, I'm optimistic. These are all movies I want to see. Um, yeah. you know, it, it, it's actually looking like 2021 actually may be a really good year for movies, which is great. 
Um, yeah, potentially. Potentially, yeah. Especially if like we can get movies like Tom and Jerry to be good. Which, <laughs> I watched the trailer, and it looks like they're going with a Ro- Who Framed Roger Rabbit kind of thing with it. Which I, I, appreci- I, I do appreciate. I do appreciate that. And I do think the slapstick works. What I'm worried about is the human stuff. But I haven't seen the movie yet, so I'm going to stay optimistic. Um, I will say, I did find it funny that the very first scene uh, of the trailer yeah. is uh, Warner Brothers, uh, or the, like the director, both literally and figuratively throwing Tommy Jerry under the bus. Yeah, seriously, and it actually that <laughs> scene does work. I like I said, all the slapstick, all the slapstick in that trailer works. It's actually really well animated. Like it, it looks yeah. cool. It looks like its own visual style, which I appreciate. It, it, is, it is Tom and Jerry. It, it is. is. It is definitely Tom and Jerry. And the, oh, and the trailer is actually very well edited. It is, hmm. which is interesting. I, I wasn't expecting that. Um, the song choice. It's 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 you know modern which you would expect that Mm -hmm. but at the same time like i'm I'm optimistic because like i said you know when when wb animation does their own style of animation it actually tends to work very well you know with who framed roger rabbit and the surprising hit the lego movie and the lego batman movie two really great movies that i never expected to be great so i have optimism i do i i do think the the animation style looks really cool for what they're trying to go for so that being said i grew up with tom and jerry too so i'm I'm, i hope to god that this is good i'm praying i'm literally praying so let's say that uh Uh, dune of course i'm excited for it. it's the neville nov like yeah you're crazy if you're not proven to be very good with oh yeah uh readapting sci-fi stuff blade blade runner 2049 probably one of my favorite movies of that year um Actually, I uh, my second favorite movie of that year, twenty seventeen. Yeah. Good year for movies. Logan was number one. I loved Logan. Ah, uh, that makes sense. Logan was great. Logan made me cry. Not a lot of movies uh, make me cry. I so, see. yeah, man. I don't know. What about you, man? Why? Why not? What was your favorite movie of twenty seventeen? Uh, I would have to look at a list real quick. No, it's fine, man. Let me... There's a lot of great ones. Yeah. For sure, man. Yeah. Love, love your... Uh... Oh, man. Is that a... Are you singing um, a song from Moana right now, dude? I don't know. That just came out I of my head. I don't know. That just came out on the top of my head. You know, I don't remember anything about Moana. It's uh, a, yeah. <laughs> sadly, but hey, man. So, I did really dig Logan and Blade Runner. Okay. Uh, I also dug Get Out. Get Out was awesome. Uh, I also, uh, dug Wind River. Wind River was. Oh yeah, Wind River was probably my favorite indie film of that year. Yeah. Th- uh, that... Baby Driver came out that year. Oh yeah, Baby Driver, great movie. Uh, I'd probably say my favorite was Lady Bird. Oh yeah, Lady Bird was awesome. That that was probably the favorite. That was a great movie. You're although, right. Although 2017, 2017 had a really good lineup. Oh yeah, dude. Twenty seventeen and twenty nineteen were awesome. Yeah. Twenty nineteen was just incredible. I miss twenty nineteen, man, and I can't believe I'm saying that. Yeah. <laughs> At least for movies. Yeah. Uh, Joker came out. Fucking loved it. Um, my yeah. favorite movie of that year, The Irishman, came out. And even though that movie is three and a half hours long, it, it felt like an hour and a half for me. Yeah. I, I love Martin Scorsese, so that was just an amazing experience that I actually got to see in theaters, which was even better. Um, I actually got to see in theaters really? three times. Hmm. Yeah, man. One was for a screening, and then the other two I just bought a ticket. But, uh-huh. hey, man. Yeah, did you watch The Irishman in 2019? Uh, I watched it once it came out on Netflix. Okay, all right. What'd you think of that? I thought it was good. Okay, it's not my favorite Scorsese. My favorite's probably. Oh no, it's not my favorite I'd either. Say, I'd say Wolf of Wall Street is my favorite. Wolf of Wall Street. Okay. Uh, yeah. Goodfellas is mine. I love Goodfellas. Good Goodfellas is like a close second for me. 
and Casino actually comes in second place for me as well. Yeah. Love Casino. Um, you know that's that's actually something I will say. Martin Scorsese hasn't made a single bad movie. Not a single mm-hmm. one. It's interesting. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, man. At least in my opinion. But hey, man, that's uh, it's what movies are. Movies are subjective. They are. They are. They are. They are. I mean, I think that actually kind of wraps up this uh, recording session. I mean, we got really nothing else to talk about. Like, we kind of just drifted off, tried to make conversation. Um, yeah, pretty much. We talked about everything we could talk about. There's, uh, I have a lot more topics to uh, to uh, take notes on, and hopefully I'll get those episodes out soon. So stay tuned, guys. I will be doing that soon as well, as well as a I Got to See Spongebob. Uh, Sponge on the Run, uh, very early uh, for me. This is, it already came out in other countries, but I was able to see it early. So uh, I will get that review. I will get that review out to all of you very soon. But until then, thank you, Dennis, for joining me. By the way, this was a lot of fun. I had, I had a ton of fun. Um, Glad I mentioned. But yeah. Un- yeah. until then, uh, we'll see you guys later.